Professor Nero Mehta from LG Institute of Technology and Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about subject called Automobile System Design, in which today's topic is to discuss in and to learn about gliding material and heat dissipation during the brake. So before selecting this brake lining material, we should learn about what is the mechanism of braking and how this brake works. So the brake the function of brake is to regulate and absorb power and velocity of a vehicle. So when how by means of friction and by means of force it absorbs this power as well as velocity of a moving vehicle. And this excessive energy and force will convert it into uh, heat as well as in some time, in some cases, it could be converted into shock. So here we have to design material which can adapt to this heat as well as to some amount of shock. So while considering this brake lining material, because this brake lining material is very essential because of it is the material which directly comes into contact with that moving element which is rotating and which should, which should be stopped. So here our concern is to select material depending on it should be absorbed a whole amount of energy as well as velocity at the same time it shouldn't be faded that much easily that it could it could directly affect the line or life of our brake. So here uh, we will discuss about different properties and different types of properties which it should require uh, by selecting this material of a brake lining. So, first of all, it should have high coefficient friction to develop that connection or to develop that braking effect because ultimately a brake has to break the torque of a rotating element. So what is the function of the brake? Brake function of brake is to absorb the velocity and power by means of breaking the torque of that rotating element. And how it will uh, break the torque of rotating element by means of friction. So our material should have high friction with minimum fading. So it should provide high friction between that rotating element and our element which, which is shopping or which is stopping our moving element which should have higher uh, friction which is uh, which should have lesser amount of fading. Clear? In other words, uh, you can also say that that friction should remain constant all over the life and over the surface even if even if its temperature changes. Means it shouldn't show any kind of significant change with respect to uh, change in temperature. So here material has two properties should have true two properties. One is it should have high coefficient of friction but with minimum fading in each and every condition whether it could be a high temperature low temperature uh, raining or anything it should have it should provide uh, minimum fading second point here we will discuss as it should have higher or sorry it should have higher heat resistance and low wear rate what is this heat resistance means it shouldn't be prone to very heated or we, you can say it, it shouldn't be change its property if the heat increases at, at the same time it shouldn't get weird out it shouldn't get weird out at any condition at any operating condition or any atmospheric condition so our brake should have higher heat resistance mean it shouldn't be get into or absorb any excessive amount of heat while working as well as from atmosphere at the same time it shouldn't show any kind of wear according to its working condition at the same time to the atmospheric condition fourth point it should have high heat dissipation capacity because heat is unavoidable in this friction mechanism because ultimately friction brings heat uh, in our scenario and ultimately this heat is generated just because of higher amount of friction. This higher amount of friction will ultimately leads to excessive amount of heat generation and this heat should be dissipated with the help of natural heat conduction convection. We have to design our uh, system or we have to select that material that it should have high dissipation of heating capacity. Clear. Yeah. So it should uh, it should dissipate heat um, uh, as as soon as it get heat heated due to this friction motion. Yeah. Then it should have low coefficient of thermal expansion. Ultimately, it shouldn't be changing its property as well as its shape and size. 
so as you know that when heat uh, any material which is heated up it should tends to increase its size so sh this shouldn't this material the selection of the sliding material this shouldn't be increases size uh, size by means of any kind of heat connected with that clear and then it should have adequate mechanical strength means it should have mechanical strength it shouldn't be tear apart it shouldn't be compressed it shouldn't be uh, torn or anything while working condition or so ultimately it should have higher efficiency which is toughness as well as in some cases it should have higher ductility also clear yeah? so these are the mechanical properties of a brick and then it should not be affected by moisture and oil because as we know that our brick always on constantly work under the condition which could be high heat or high draining condition or ultimately the oil leakage or oil uh, between our two surfaces so it shouldn't be have it shouldn't have any chemical reaction regarding to this moisture as well as oil so it shouldn't be affected by this kind of moisture as well as oil so we have in this points uh, by this point we have discussed about different kind of uh, material properties for our selecting of our <clears throat> Break material once again. Let let repeat this point. Our first point is it should have higher friction, but also also it shouldn't be have higher fading ratio. Means it should have low fading ratio. Ultimately, uh, it should remain constant over the period of the time. Clear and over the period of the surface at the same time. It should have low wear rate. Clear at the same time, it should have high heat resistance and it should have high even this heat dissipation capacity should be high. Clear it should show low uh, thermal expansion. It should be changing its shape and size according to uh, temperature changes. Clear it should have adequate mechanical strength, toughness, ductility, wear strength, uh, faded strength, anything. Clear and uh, it shouldn't be affected by moisture and oil. That that's also a chemical reaction which comes under the case. <clears throat> Let's move on to uh, heat to be dissipated by breaking. Uh, there are several materials like leather fiber and wood facing. The maximum heat, the leather fiber and this wood facing could be could be in um, a working condition that is 65 to 70. If the temperature <coughs> the temperature goes above to 65 to 70 degree, it will be directly affecting to the working and efficiency of our breaking. So, for if we are using a leather or a fiber or a wood as a facing material or as a breaking material, we should be making sure that the temperature shouldn't be exceeded to the 65 to 70 degree of the Celsius. Another material is a very well known material which is asbestos as well as sometimes we can also use those woven metal, metal material. Or metal surfaces uh, like wire of metal is woven with the asbestos so at that combination uh, it, it can attain maximum or it can work uh, properly or efficiently until the temperature 90 to 105 degrees centigrade if, if the temperature increases beyond this limit it will ultimately deteriorate the efficiency as well as shape and size of our uh, breaking material which is woven with the uh, asbestos and metal then uh, for automobile brake with asbestos block lining uh, where we have used those blocks of asbestos it can have a higher amount of that maximum temperature and it is they, they facilitate us to work in any condition but the limit for that is 180 to 225 degrees so ultimately uh, we can work with this asbestos material which have 180 to uh, 225 degrees celsius and ultimately uh, they are more feasible compared to any other braking system here, uh, the equation we have, uh, I have put is about heat generated. Now, let's discuss about mechanism of this generation of heat. How this heat is generated and what is the behind uh, uh, working for this heat. So, ultimately, what we are doing is, in this case, we are converting our mechanical work into heat by means of applying frictional force on our moving material. So here you can see energy which is in terms of heat generated. It is directly shown as mu Rn into velocity V where Rn is normal force and velocity V is velocity of our breaking drum or you can say rotating element. Combination of velocity and force always gives us Velocity and force always gives us work upon time. 
clear because force into distance upon time a velocity is nothing but distance upon time uh, rn is represented by force so it is ultimately becomes this equation here you can see the equation uh, mu rn into v where rn is nothing but the force v is velocity it is represented by displacement upon time and force into displacement is nothing but work and this work is multiplied by friction so ultimately this friction or you can say mu is making this frictional work or work absorbed by frictional force and that is converted into something and which is called r a heat dissipation or heat generation how it works and how the mechanical works mechanism works so this mechanism works with the help of pressurizing our shoes or pressurizing our disc brake with the help of external pressure system or by means of mechanical braking or by means of hydraulic braking so ultimately it is nothing but force here force rn is nothing but pressure into projected area under the brake clear so ultimately our equation becomes uh, coefficient of friction into pressure into projected area and uh, v which is velocity of rotating element so what we are having here is we are having this frictional force which converting our mechanical work into heat or you can say heat generate due to that absorbing of that mechanical work with the help of frictional material so that's why this work is nothing but the work loss due to friction clear uh, we are up to do or up to loss this work to stop our vehicle ultimately our vehicle is stopped by this uh, this uh, resisting uh, resisting motion which is generated due to our resisting force which is generated due to pressure applied with the help of a mechanical external system or a hydraulic external system so ultimately this is how the mechanism of heat generation uh, uh, occurs in our braking system i hope you got each and every point which we have discussed today clear for this the reference for this particular topic it is from machine design by rs kurmian uh, but also you can find this reference in auto design by rb gupta this particular question um, once in a while or you can say each and every time uh, gtu have been asked uh, for uh, even four marks as well as in some cases seven marks so this is uh, your four marks or seven marks question once again let me discuss about this heat dissipation by work so in this case work is to be converted into the heat and heat ultimately ultimately generated which is absorbed by means of a natural phenomenon or you can apply external uh, external cooling system i hope you got this uh, particular video session very well if you have any doubt or any problem regarding to this particular video you can directly ask me or contact me in next video we will discuss about how this braking system work and how the vehicles braking will work there there are four layers by designing this uh, braking system one is to design uh, to design or, or to uh, to find out the stopping distance by applying braking on our vehicle second one is to uh, design element uh, like if it is a disc brake or if it is a shoe brake or a drum brake clear and then to design a system which is a hydraulic system or a mechanical system of our braking system so in next video session we will discuss about minimum stopping distance for our brakes clear thank you thank you so much i'm stopping here